Hello, everyone. My name is Dr. Kirk Fisnick. And, you know, October, which started today, October 1st, is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And I thought that I might share some information uh, each and every Tuesday with you this month on how you can either approach breast cancer if you've been diagnosed with it, or if you know somebody that has it, or maybe you're just looking for a way to prevent it. Maybe it's something that runs in your family. Maybe you know somebody who has breast cancer. And uh, so today, just a, a quick, short uh, a webinar here on the doctor's clinic page. Here's an article that was published in the Journal of Breast Cancer um, in 2015, and uh, and so I thought I might share this. So this was this was uh, published four years ago in May in uh, 2015, and you can read by the title of the article there: Omega three fatty acids for breast cancer prevention and survivorship. So, folks. Uh, for you, you women and men who are, are working, with, have women in your lives that you uh, want to help them prevent this. This is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Um, women with evidence of high intake ratios of marine omega-3 fatty acids, eicosapentaenoic acid, EPA, and doxohexaenoic acid, DHA, relative to the omega-6 arachidonic acid, have been found to have a reduced risk of breast cancer compared to those with low ratios in some but not all case control studies. So if increasing EPA and DHA relative to arachidonic acid infecting in reducing breast cancer risk, likely mechanisms include reduction in pro-inflammatory lipid derivatives. Well, this is something that I've been talking about for the last couple of weeks. Omega-6 is a pro-inflammatory fat. Uh, according to the studies that I published last week, if you go to a typical Chinese restaurant and you order a, 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 just a single order of sweet and sour chicken, you're gonna get 30,000 milligrams of omega-6. Omega-6 is the, is the pro-inflammatory uh, fat. And, uh, and so, you're going to suffer from low grade inflammation and to come to, to lower this, you want to, you want to address it by increasing your EPA DHA, which uh, comes from fish oils, fish oils folks. And so you can, you can lower this simply by adding omega three fatty acids. Interesting because what it does is that the omega six and the omega three uh, basically go to the same place in the body. And if you have enough omega-3, it's going to block your body from, a, uh, from letting the omega-6s attach. So interesting, interesting. So primary prevention trials with, um, with these uh, biomarkers or uh, cancer incidents are underway. And uh, they've, been, they've, they've been doing studies on this. But what they found is that the uh, supplementation help to prevent or alleviate problems with uh, people after the breast cancer diagnosis. Um, it also helped with uh, cardiac and cognitive dysfunction, uh, chemotherapy induced peripheral neuropathy as well. That's interesting, um, you know, because when we take a look at the studies on nicotinamide riboside and nicotinamide mononucleotide, which are a form of niacin, vitamin B3, they also find that those things help with, uh, with the, the chemotherapy-induced peripheral neuropathy. Interesting. EPA, DHA also has insulin sensitizing and anabolic uh, properties. So, and then it goes on to say that chemotherapy associated loss of muscle mass and weight gain can be addressed with omega-3 fats. And we all know that when people are undergoing chemotherapy, that they, they tend to lose weight. They tend to get uh, real small. They tend to have problems with decreased immune function. 
Folks, think about that. You can help these people out just by just by telling them, hey, maybe you should consume some fish oils. I was working with a, a friend of mine that had been diagnosed with us uh, with uh, pancreatic cancer about three years ago. And uh, I told him when he got diagnosed right away in the beginning, I said, omega threes, you want to be on these omega threes. And uh, I hadn't seen this article then. I just found this article uh, the other day, yesterday, actually. And so when, uh, when they're talking about this, the predominant driving force in breast carcinogenesis, which is the formation of new breast cancer, um, has been thought to be hormonal. Cytokine production and inflammation are also being recognized as important in breast cancer development and progression. A progressive increase in activated macrophages and T cells is observed between normal breast tissue, proliferative uh, breast disease, and breast cancer. So the stimulus for the increase in inflammatory cell infiltration observed with proliferative breast disease and breast cancer is unknown, but probably has varying etiologies, including immunogenic uh, gene alterations, epithelial cells, uh, reaction to breakdown of basement membrane components, and for obese women, uh, excess cytokine production from dysfunctional fat cells. So they found that long-chain fatty acids, EPA, DHA, which are found in fish oils, are... Uh, able to help modulate this and they're able to help uh, lower the inflammation. And, uh, and so um, it, it helps with uh, uh, regulating and modulating the pro-inflammatory omega-6 arachidonic acid, right? And, and, and when I learned about arachidonic acid years ago, arachidonic acid is the one that it, it causes a cascade of an event, events to happen in your body including uh, autoimmune type disorders and, and, and uh, inflammatory reactions, uh, actually uh, um, like allergic type reactions as well. And so uh, when, you, when you supplement with omega-3 fats to reduce the cancer and other chronic debilitating conditions, including cardiovascular disease, cognitive impairment, you know, like dementia, Alzheimer's, um, you know, they, they, they show that this, uh, this really helps out. So we want to have a high omega-3, low omega-6 intake ratio. Um, and uh, they found that when they looked at uh, different societies, different populations that had high fish intake, marine fish um, that are, you know, full of fats like cod liver oil and things like that. So they found people in Japan and Alaskan natives and Greenland they found that there was a, a decrease in the amount of, of um, problems with, uh, with um, cognitive function and breast cancer. And uh, so we want to have, according to this, we want to have a ratio of omega-3 to omega-6 closer to 1 to 1, 1 to 2. Um, you know, like it says here, similar to the pre-civilized man. But now, here in the States, uh, as I reported last week, uh, some reports are showing that our omega-6 to omega-3 ratio is somewhere close to, you know, 20 to 25 to 1. I mean, holy cow, holy cow. So how does it work? Well, um, the omega-3, omega-6 fatty acids are a group of essential polyunsaturated fatty acids that uh, play important roles in the cells, the cell membrane, cell signaling. Right. We've heard a lot about cell signaling in the research lately. But um, basically what it does is that it, it helps to uh, um, helps to uh, get rid of inflammation. So you can see here omega six, um, the progression, linoleic acid, arachidonic acid. And then it causes these pro inflammatory. If you look in the side of the graph over there, the omega threes, it goes to EPA and then DHA, which is minimally inflammatory. Okay, so here's another chart shows out how, how it works. I'll just leave that up there for a little bit so you can look at that. But bottom line is, is that when you're looking at when you're looking at the um, EPA DHA, it, it works on the, the, the what they call the the, the coxin enzymes um, and. We've heard a lot about that with different medications, uh, uh, pain medications that were uh, uh, shown to cause heart disease. 
but it, the omega-3 works on the same pathway and it blocks the inflammatory recruitment. Interesting. Interesting. And then it also has a, 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 a neuroprotective uh, mechanism. And, uh, and so, you know, um, pretty interesting stuff, pretty interesting. But they went on to say that, that when you, uh, when you take omega, uh, omega-3 fish oils, um, you know, you can go through here. You can, you can see that primary source of EPA, DHA are fish and supplements and very dramatically in their content. Um, DHA is generally present equal or higher amounts in EPA and seafood, but the total amount of EPA, DHA, as well as the ratio of EPA, DHA vary by supplement to supplement. Um, and, uh, and so, you know, the supplement that I highly recommend is the sizzle super omega plus. And the reason why a super mega plus has a balance um, of the omega threes to the omega sixes, but it's also got omega five, sevens and nines, which, which all work together to help improve um, function and make it so it works better. So there we can see uh, different uh, sources of the, of the EPA DHA, um, they don't have krill listed on there, but uh, they found that krill has a different form of the DHA, and the DHA is uh, is actually a, a great way of getting uh, fats to the brain, and uh, and helps helps with that. So, how does the EPA DHA work with uh, preventing breast cancer? And they, so they've been doing this studies in labs, but they found that it reduces the pro-inflammatory uh, fats and increase in inflammation resolving fats. So inflammation, so inflammation. So if you read into this, they're basically saying that inflammation is the main cause of, of, of uh, breast cancer. Well, think about it. What is uh, breast tissue mostly made of? It's mostly made of fatty tissue fatty tissue. And so what they're trying to say is that if you overload your diet with pro-inflammatory fats, chances are that's going to be deposited into the breast tissue. Hmm. Interesting, right? So here's the, here's the results of the studies. The results of the case-controlled studies, particularly when questionnaires are used, the primary measure of, of exposure are mixed. They probably reflect uh, accuracy of recall and, and uh, what people ate. Um, so they find that that when it's uh, you know when it's uh, uh, food, total fish intake and breast cancer in population where um, fish and fatty fish could be low, they say that there's no significant association, right? Um, because People just don't eat that much fish, not, not in the United States. You know, typical um, American diet, we have, uh, we have a high ratio of, of omega-6, uh, like we were talking about earlier and what I presented last year, last week on this call, was that uh, we, ha we have a ratio of, of like, you know, 16 all the way up to 25 to 1, depending on, 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 what, you, on what you found. But, um, you know, so when we, when, we look at, when we look at these different studies, I'm looking for a place in this study that, that I was reading. Um, and uh, right there, I got it highlighted right there. You can see it in the gray. That the higher levels of EPA, DHA was reported to be associated with a 25% reduction in breast cancer reoccurrence and improved over mortality in a high court of over 3,000 women with early stage breast cancer. I think that's something that you need to share. It's another reason that you, um, that you wanna be on omega-3 fatty acids and you wanna be on a a high quality one. You don't want to just go to, you know, your, your local um, store and buy any old uh, fish oil because I mean, let's face it. If you take, if you take uh, a fats and, and you leave them laying out uh, at, at room temperature, I mean, they're going to go rancid. They're going to go bad. Well, that's what happens with most of these, uh, with most of these fats, uh, 
that you buy, the fish oils that you buy. They also go on to say EPA, DHA reduces bone density. It uh, reduces uh, joint pain, um, prevents insulin resistance. Again, they talk about sarcopenic weight gain, you know, uh, you know, like uh, sarcopenia. I always, I always tell people it's like thinking about somebody who, who's skinny, yet their fat content is really high. When you grab their arm, um, you can feel that there's just no muscle mass at all. And so, you know, they're saying that uh, if, if you even just do a, a moderate or a minimal amount of exercise, 90 minutes of exercise per week, vitamin D3, 2,000 international units a day, and a gram of EPA, DHA a day, a gram, one gram. Then they go on to say that uh, cognitive abnormalities absorbed, absorbed in 20 to 70 percent of women after chemotherapy. You know, so uh, it's commonly called chemotherapy brain, right? They, they seem like they've uh, gotten a little bit of dementia. So they're saying here that um, that uh, the, 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 the anti-inflammatory uh, compounds found in, in fish oil, enhances the production of neurotransmitters. Neurotransmitters like serotonin, dopamine, uh, GABA, uh, uh, epinephrine, norepinephrine, these are all your neurotransmitters. And so they're saying that, that these fish oils are gonna, with help of that, and they're gonna help with reducing the production of these amyloid plaques, right? Amyloid plaques, you'll hear a lot about that if you're paying attention to uh, uh, Alzheimer's disease. And you'll hear about that. So they're saying doses of DHA uh, for cognitive improvement in the range of 1,800 milligrams per day. 1,800 milligrams per day, right? And what's your best source of, of DHA? Well, in, in my opinion, uh, krill oil. Krill oil. So again, um, when, we're, when we're looking at, at different uh, fish oil supplements, um, this is the one that I like. This is the one that I take every day. Um, my, I give it to my black lab, you know, um, not because I'm worried about him getting breast cancer, but you know, it shows that, that it helps to prevent arthritis and heart disease in, uh, in humans and in animals. And, and boy, I tell you what, you know, my dog is my buddy. Uh, he travels with me. Chewy travels with me a lot. And so uh, he gets a dose of this every day as well. He only gets one. I only give him one. He's per, you know, he's only 80 pounds. Um, I actually take four of these a day. So I'm getting, I'm getting a, a little bit more, but uh, Super Omega Plus has been specially formulated to enhance the cardiovascular health, protect for cognitive function and offers a source of dynamic antioxidants. So, you know, you can, you can see here, you can read that. It's a powerful mixture of laboratory extracted omega fatty acids, omega-3s, omega-6s, right? They're considered essential. Omega-7, which helps to regulate fat and blood sugar. Omega-9, which increases metabolism. And then we add CoQ10. CoQ10 helps prevent a heart disease. There's a lot of great studies on that. Omega-5 is a powerful antioxidant. It boosts the immune system. Omega-7, which helps to regulate fat and blood sugar levels. And then uh, omega-9 to increase metabolism. And also improve your, your attitude. So there's, there's some, some vitamin D3. Again, you know, uh, uh, very, very uh, important. And uh, so, folks, um, I'm just going to click on this here so you can see the label of this product. Right? Three. Soft gels are considered the, um, the normal dose. Like I said, uh, I actually take four. And uh, my goal is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ramp this up. I'm going to ramp it up. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take four for a while. And, and, uh, and then I'm going to bump it up to five. And eventually I'm going to take six. Um, I want to take six of these a day uh, because, you know, I just, uh, I just think that it, it, it's, it's that healthy for me that, um, you know, I look at, I look at, you know, kind of my family history and, uh, inflammation tends to be, uh, something that, that runs in the family. So I think that there's some genetic pathways that are causing this. 
Um, if you look at your parents, your grandparents, if, if any of them had any autoimmune disorders like rheumatoid arthritis, uh, if they have osteoarthritis, um, if anybody has any uh, heart disease, uh, you might want to think about doing that as well. You might want to bump up, uh, ramp your levels up to, uh, to a double dose. It's also got some uh, curcumins and, uh, and, and so it, it really is, it's really a great product. So anyhow, folks, like I said, um, just a quick share today on, on the call. I wanted everybody to have that. I didn't want to skip doing the doctor's clinic call today. Um, I know that Aaron had made an important announcement, uh, you know, an hour and a half ago during the time frame that I normally do the doctor's clinic call. So anyhow, folks, have a great day. Um, start taking Super Omega Plus. Um, in my opinion, um, I think that, that, that this is the very best uh, uh, product as far as your Super Omegas. Uh, I don't recommend anything else. This is the one that I take. This is the one that I have my, my folks taken. Um, and uh, this is the one I'd have you taken as well. And so take this. And, and, and if you have any uh, pre-existing or, or uh, familial uh, type of tendency for heart disease or anything that, that might be autoimmune, maybe a, a, a different types of cancer, um, you know, breast cancer, prostate cancer, then uh, you might want to think about doubling up on this as well. You know, you might want to think about that. So have a great day. Bye-bye.